Okay, so after our adventure with the uh, AFR table, we have to look at some other tables as well, because the AFR table is not responsible for fueling, nor is it for spark, obviously. Um, while we did set some spark settings, we obviously have to still look at the spark table and adjust to our needs. And this is what we're going to do in this video. I have to add though, this table we are setting up now is not a final table because it's only for testing stuff like uh, testing if the car runs correctly, what your boost threshold is, how the internal or external wastegate is reacting to, for example, your boost controller. So we have selected rather low ignition values so that you don't experience any knock or something. And um, so that the spark table is very, very safe. And you will have to do tuning on your own later when you get the car driving. We will also get to that point, but that is still going to be about 10, 15 videos away, I think. And uh, yeah, so just so you know, this is only like a base map to work from and to go off of later. And it's not going to produce the most power and the engine is going to be running really rather hot on full load because the less ignition advance you have, the hotter the engine is going to run. And uh, so don't do long full throttle pulls. Uh, as I said, it is just for testing, for example, how much boost pressure uh, your turbo is hitting at a, for example, when you program your boost controller uh, or your electronic boost control solenoid. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the spark table or rather the spark tuning. We are not going to tune this obviously yet because we are only setting up the base map and something to get the car running with. Um, the problem with spark tuning, I'm just gonna open the map up right here. The problem with spark tuning is that you probably will need a dyno for that or some tool to monitor your spark, which, will, which I will come to you in a video on a later date when we are actually trying to tune the car when it is running. We have tuned it on a spark base map and then going from there. We just wanna set up a spark base map now. This, for example, is the spark base map that we get from the stock uh, Speedwino base map. So this should be a um, NA application and it is already should work for most applications as it is very smooth. You can see there in our 3D view, it is really, really smooth and it does give you about a uh, 28, 29 degree advance, which is pretty moderate for an NA application, but in theory is drivable and uh, should be usable, uh, except for the low range or for the idle. That's kind of a bit weird, but still nothing too bad. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a tool as well, which you can use to tune that spark map because Tuning it by just guessing is, well, not really uh, that feasible. And um, yeah, we are just gonna use that to help us create our desired Spark map. Obviously, just with the AFR map as well, we have to get the scaling right beforehand. So the first row is the ignition load in KPA. It does not say KPA, but it is in KPA. So on the base map, we have a map for naturally aspirated engines, which only goes up to 100 KPA. Uh, obviously in our uh, example, we are going to use a turbocharged application. So we are going to extend this further or rather put in different numbers. And the RPMs are also not really what we want because we are not going to use up to 9,000 RPM. This is why we're going to click here, just we, like we did in the other one as well. Um, we would like to run up to about 7,500 RPM. So I'm going to go a bit above that as our maximum. So 7,700, and then we just scale down everything from here, equal sized steps. So we are probably going to do 400 RPM steps. So 7,300. 70, uh, 6,800, no, 6,900. That pretty much covers it. Um, we have a bit more resolution up top, but that does not really matter. 
if you want to you could do a bit more resolution so a bit more steps for example 500 700 900 1100 in the uh, lower range that makes idle tuning somewhat easier although in the spark map that really does not matter much so um, yeah you can just leave this alone as well because it will interpolate between those values as well so i'm gonna just apply new x y values and interpolate z yeah that's perfect and then we're going to worry about this um, as i said in the afr thingy as in the afr table as well we probably won't need up to 10 kpa down low so we're going to start at 25 just to make our life a bit easier and because we are going to go up to about one bar or 15 psi we are going to put 200 kpa which is one bar or 15 psi in here and because the we are not going to put this at the top because we are still wanting some safety between those two columns because we are going to put in 220 and 230 in here the top one is going to be the value we have set our overboost protection at and the one below that is going to be 10 below the overboost protection and the room between your target boost level and your well second to last one from the top is going to be um, just a safety and i would recommend at least 10 percent i'd rather choose 15 but 10 percent is okay also and this is going to be just we are running our desired ignition advance at 200 kpa and then we're going to go a bit more into the safe zone at 220 and even more safe at 230 so that we don't have any detonation this is especially important for stock piston engines or engines that um, are running quite high in general or quite hot in general because their detonation becomes a much bigger issue especially if the engine is a bit more well let's say expensive then we are going to do the same thing as with the rpm we're going to just scale it down below here um, so we are going to use i think let's do 100 i just want a bit more resolution in my ignition table than in the afr table because in the afr table you have seen we don't have as much uh, room between those um, we, we have more room in between the values um, but i want more precision in tuning my in boost settings or my in boost table so i'm just gonna do more columns in boost and then have less columns out of boost because it is not that important for a car that is boosted um, for the mid-range uh, to to have more detail so and i'm going to in interpolate there as well i'm just going to count how many this is 40 and then 30 and that will be pretty precise as well and we don't really need much more than this okay obviously as with the other one as well we have our um, ignition table that would be for na here we obviously have to change that before we do any driving or we we could start the engine but if we would run for example 29 or 28 degrees of ignition advance we would experience heavy knock except when we were uh, we would be running uh, methanol or so then that would work fine but we obviously are not for this reason because we don't have any reference obviously you could google some spark tables but that really isn't the the a good way to do it so we are going to use this um, spark table or spark advanced table calculator this is not the be all and end all but gives you a rough estimate at where to go off of for your engine First of all, we have the cylinder bore, which is going to be in millimeters, and we are using a Miata engine, so it's 78 millimeters. Combustion chamber type is most of the time probably going to be three or four valves, except for example on a Honda D series engine where you would use a two valve closed chamber or optimized quench system. Um, though this might have some really aggressive spark advance so you might always choose this one so i would rather um, tend to use that for your base table and then go off of that 
uh, fuel is also very important uh, here you only have the american standards if you are tuning a car in europe uh, a 91 or 92 octane is about equivalent to 98 octane in europe or rather like germany or something and premium is going to be 100 or 102 octane and regular is 95. i have tuned some cars at to run with a turbo at 95 octane that can be done it's not really that big of a deal but i would recommend you always go for uh, at least 98 octane or obviously in an ideal scenario e85 i'm going to use uh, 98 octane then the compression ratio is also very important for ignition advance because the higher your compression ratio is the lower is the advance you can run much more ignition advance with a lower compression ratio and obviously much more boost and um, we are choosing the stock ratio here which is on a 1.6 nb uh, 9.4 to 1 so between that and that idle vacuum it's in um, milligram in hg or inches in hg which is weird and then it again shows here psi and that would be 15 psi or rather at our at ours it would be like 19 or something and maximum rpm is going to be 7 700 idle rpm is going to be 500 and then if we click on generate advanced table we got our values here and we got our um, ignition values here. I don't really like to copy this and just paste it in. That's not the thing that I'd like to do because this can vary between each and every tune. And as you can see here, when we look at the 99 or at the atmospheric value, that's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have only 26.7 degrees of ignition advance. This is very, very low. And then we can look at our ignition table that we have here, which already says 28. And uh, out of experience, in theory most of engines most of four cylinder engines 16 valve are going to be hovering at about 30 degrees ignition advance uh, at the optimum and this is where we're going to be at as well so we are going to choose just 30 degrees you could go for a bit lower but mostly on uh, 98 octane that should be fine and we're going to use 28 here and then go down to 26 here because the higher the RPM, because of the slower, because of the burning process, obviously you will have to vary with the ignition process and therefore vary with the values as well. Because then you can, the higher the engine revs, the later or the earlier you can ignite the fuel because the ignition takes the same time to fulfill in the chamber um, you can start to ignite the mixture sooner than at a lower rpm but we are also going to pull up the ignition here somewhat some cars especially on a miata have some issues with knock in lower rpms so you have a spot that has to be relatively low in the 20 2000 to 3000 rpm range so you have to be careful and keep in mind that the engine will knock pretty heavily here or will start to knock sooner than in other tables or in other fields of the table so keep that in mind you'll have to hear for the knock but these values should be fine although do not quote me on that this can also be wrong the values we can see in our calculator here for example at 2000 rpm they are the about the same as they are in our table so we can judge that they are pretty safe um, but the ecu or the base map of the ecu just says that they are uh, lower because they obviously don't want your engine to explode right away i'm just gonna smooth this out right now um, we are obviously going to do some more at the top end 
because the part load or the cruising tables are pretty good right now so they are around a few degrees higher we are probably going to increase that a bit too and then smooth that out because cruising is going to be ignition wise quite a bit higher than full throttle with no boost because of the efficiency of the engine and we are going to set our idle for now at around somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees i'm just gonna set it at 14 um, so these cells or thereabouts because if we have different values in the cells it could be when the ignition or when the rpm passes 1500 it starts to go into a different cell and advances the ignition and therefore the rpm rises again and uh, that's something you don't want when starting to idle tune you can tune that out or you can tune around that but it's easiest to start out with a solid ignition table around your idle and uh, that makes it a lot easier especially in the beginning so as i said we turn up the ignition advance around here somewhat uh, so that in part throttle is going to be a bit more efficient it's not really a hundred percent necessary to do that but it is recommended as it is done pretty much everywhere and on a stock car as well on a stock car it might even be more aggressive than this but i'm just gonna leave it at that on the turbo side or on the side where the ecu or the engine is going to see pressure we are going from 26.7 degrees of ignition down to about 18.5 at 15 psi which would be kind of aggressive when we would look at the 26.7 so going from 26.7 at atmospheric down to 18.5 would be only a 8 degree reduction um, in theory the rule of thumb is going for a reduction of one degree of timing per psi of boost pressure that is added because this calculator is using a relatively tame ignition table um, in the na scenario or when your engine is not seeing boost we can pretty much i wouldn't say ignore that because it gives you a pretty much a good rule of thumb where you may end up at but we are just going to use for safety measures our 15 degrees rule or one degree at per psi of boost rule and we're going to use 28 as a baseline and then reduce it to 13 degrees so 15 degrees off of that you have to consider that this is very very moderate as for timing goes but it is very good um, if you want to start art tuning and you are not going to risk anything by going with that timing if you went for a more aggressive timing obviously you could go there and add about maybe three to four degrees depending on the engine and on your fuel quality but anything above that is probably going to be requiring a device that is at least listening for knock or maybe even a dyno tune so that you can get the maximum out of your engine. This is just very, very, very safe and uh, just that you don't break anything. We are going to look into tuning this further when we are going on the road. Okay, so Again, we are going to 13 degrees here because we have 28 here and we're going to 15 degrees here. And then we just interpolate it. As I said in the last video, you can only do this with the um, paid version of Tuner Studio. But, and if you have the free version, you have to put in everything manually. So that's a bit of a pain, but uh, you can still do it that way and still use everything I do right here with the free version, kind of. It may take you some time longer, but it will work nevertheless. So, and what we are, what are we going to do with the 220 kPa and 230 kPa? That is something that we are going to use as a protection for the engine. Um, because we are aiming at 200 kPa, we are going to reduce that to about... 10 degrees of ignition timing so reduce it at another five degrees um, which is very low now so we don't run into any issues i would highly recommend that you keep it 
at the one bar mark because obviously if you went over that you're going to interpolate to the other mark and therefore reducing the timing quite drastically and then your power output you obviously could select a bit more aggressive strategy here so that you only reduced it by three degrees or something but as i said this is for safety reasons and um, obviously on this ignition level you are not going to see any knock this is why i'm going to copy the same one as the top one but now comes the twist because we are although we may tune the bottom one although we, we may tune this one later if we wanted to go maybe up to 1.1 bar or so um, we are still going to leave the top one alone because that is our safety because if we went up to 230 kPa the engine is only going to run at 10 degrees advance maximum which is very safe and therefore not going to hurt anything and this is how to protect your engine on a basic ECU if you do not have any EGT monitoring and uh, some different stuff. This would be your basic turbo table. Yes, it is very, very safe and very, very conservative. I know, and it is not going to produce the highest power results because you could probably easily get another four to five degrees maybe out of the um, 15 psi range so yes i know that but this is to get the car running and to get the car driving make all your tests and then go from there when you have tools to monitor your knock setup and we are also going to look at the table again when we have the ability to do it because obviously this is not going to produce much power one thing you also got to keep in mind when using a table like this for extended periods of time i would not recommend this table for usage in general or for um, using it extended periods of time as i said because when running at full throttle or high power scenarios at low ignition advance then your engine is going to produce a, a lot more heat than it would be for example on a higher ignition advance so if it would be igniting the air fuel mixture mixture sooner and this is kind of weird to explain but as i said the lower the ignition advance the higher the temperature is going to be on the exhaust side of your whole engine and therefore advancing it yes will cool down those components especially uh, exhaust valves manifolds uh, pistons basically everything where the ignition happens um, so please do not go to a track day with a map like this get your car tuned beforehand or tune it with yourself and some device to listen for knock this is just a safe map to get you running and you have to understand this that this is not something final or anything and yeah i hope you enjoyed it again if you have any questions just let me know down below or on instagram or whatever and uh, yeah i hope you have a nice rest of the day and goodbye